Stop the FOMO! Do you ever fear of missing out on the latest and greatest technologies developed in secret and unveiled for the first time here in Los Angeles at Display Week 2023? Remember, last year, LG Display revealed for the first time MLA OLED at Display Week, and eight months later, boom, it is part of the LG G3 OLED family, and whew, just in time, because with MLA, LG OLED TVs were able to compete with Samsung and Sony QD OLED TVs. Now, at this year's Display Week, the question is, Will I uncover a new TV technology that will end up in your living room TV next year? Stick around until the end for my predictions. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, WhoKeys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build. You have the best of the best. And sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu, at the bottom, select update and security select activation then select change product key paste what you copied from WhoKeys. click next click activate and you're done you can download the windows 10 pro key and you're up and running but that's not all folks WhoKeys has keys for games too steam origin you play you name it you got it check out their sites there are discounts for all sorts of stuff and most importantly you want to be productive what about office suite yep you can download a copy of office professional with my code sf20 at checkout and bam here we are at Display Week 2023, checking out the cutting edge technologies. Today, we'll go over the interesting innovations that caught my eye, and by the end, my prediction as to which of these technologies will be in your TV next year. Beginning with the 16K TV. Sadly, this was the least impressive with no crowd at all. BOE literally placed the 16K TV at the entrance and people were actively walking around it, trying to avoid it. I think they were kind of annoyed by its prominence because ultimately, if this lack of interest is any indication, BOE, please, let's just shelve 16K for now and move on. Although 16K did not draw a crowd, do you know what did? TCL easily generated a crowd pleaser with its folding 65 inch OLED TV that transforms into a coffee table. It folds in half, there's a glass panel on top so you can continue watching the displays on the coffee table. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, yes, the folding is a gimmick, but you know what was really cool though? The OLED TV technology itself. It's not WOLED, it's not QD OLED, it's inkjet printed RGB OLED. So RGB OLED is very similar to the OLED panels on your phone. Additionally, because it's inkjet printed, it saves money during production. Now, what are the drawbacks? Well, first, it'll be slightly more expensive because we're talking first generation production. More importantly, so here's the biggest difference as far as image quality with W OLED or QD OLED. The RGB OLED, the inkjet printed OLED, has a higher average picture level at 100% full screen. So SDR sports, will be brighter. Hockey will be brighter. We're talking maybe 400 nits of full screen brightness. However, peak specular highlight, we're talking HDR impact in those small windows will not break 800 nits. Maybe it'll hit 700 nits, right? So inkjet printed RGB OLED currently from TCL overall is brighter for SDR type content, but for HDR where you want that impact above a thousand nits, Right now, it cannot handle it. And so I think this is why TCL made it into a folding table. It's an 8K, 65 inch foldable inkjet printed RGB OLED that allows them to put it in a use case that makes it more interesting because if it was just a TV, it will probably be beaten out by the QD OLED and even W OLED in terms of HDR impact and definitely will lose the brightness wars. But would you buy this coffee table that unfolds into a 65 inch TV? Let me know in the comments below. Now, moving on. BOE drew a nice crowd showing off its mini LED backlit TVs and they were all 
ADS type panels. Yes, this is BOE's best. They've given up on VA because with this next generation, they call it ADS Pro, matched to their next gen mini LED backlight. I guess they call it the UB cell. It looks pretty compelling because ADS gives them a wide viewing angle, matched to more dimming zones and a mini LED backlight elevated the contrast beyond what VA panels are capable of. Boom, you got yourself a next gen mini LED LCD TV. I expect both Hisense and Samsung to be using ADS Pro with UB Cell in their flagship TVs next year. And BOE did not forget gamers. With ADS Pro, they had a 480 Hertz monitor. The colors looked great, deep and rich. Contrast looked phenomenal. But ultimately, mini LED backlit LCD TVs, what you see today from Hisense, Samsung, and Sony, right? This year's A95L, or Samsung's QN95C, or the Hisense UXK, UAK, the TCL QM8. They use a mini LED backlight, which is super bright. And then they have layers in front of it, and then the LCD layer, polarizers, color filters, or whatever, and then you have your image. How inefficient is it? Well, check out this display. You have a comparison. This is right here on the right, the mini LED backlight without any layers in front, right? That's just a brightness of the backlight mini LED layer. Then you add all the layers in front and finally the LCD layer on the left and you see how much brightness you lose. At that demo by Sol Visosis, the rep told me that you lose up to 70% of the brightness by going through all those layers. That's inefficiency, that's last year's technology. This is why self-emissive TVs like QD OLED, W OLED, Micro LED is the future. All that brightness is preserved. So with mini LED backlight generating all that light and then you have all these layers and then you have the LCD layer. But many of you are asking, what if we removed all these layers and only had the LED generating the image? Just smaller LEDs, right? Well, guess what? BOE has that TV on display. BOE showed off its 163 inch MLED direct view theater display. If the future is large TVs, will 163 inches of direct view LED do it? BOE thinks they have the answer. The question is, how much are you willing to pay for a 163 inch direct view LED TV or MLED as BOE calls it, if a really good projection system is 20 grand, including the screen, and this TV is less than 15 grand, would you get it? And what about the big boys, Samsung Display and LG Display? Well, LG Display is extending its MLA to smaller PC monitor sizes, right? But I did not see any signs of an 83 inch MLA, sadly. And when I was inside their exhibit area, I saw a lot of innovative applications of OLED, but not new OLED technologies that would improve image quality. We're talking about stretchable OLED, rollable OLED, transparent OLED, 3D OLED, right? Just variations of OLED and very specific to use cases in the commercial marketplace. But for the home user, I didn't think of anything that you would find in your home. And Samsung Display, of course, was showing off its QD OLED variations, right? You had the 34 inch and 49 inch PC monitors, but they were all curved. Then you had the larger TV sizes, 55, 65, and 77, but sadly, no 83 inch OLED to be seen. Now, if Samsung Display won't give us an 83 inch QD OLED, maybe somebody else will. Yes, someone did give me a super large QD display. Oh wait, what's this? Free coffee, and is that a free headshot? And look at what's parked right outside, a souped up Supra. I just couldn't resist. Now, you all want a larger, 83 inch QD OLED display, but Samsung wouldn't give it to you, right? But somebody else did demonstrate a QD display that's larger than 83 inches. Say hello to Saflux from San Diego, showing off the 162 inch QD micro LED display. Yes, it's not QD OLED, it's QD micro LED. Unlike Samsung's QD OLED, it uses individual RGB micro LED chips. Each chip is an RGB pixel array with two quantum dots in the red and green layer and then a blue micro LED layer. So it can get brighter. We're talking 600 nits full screen and no burn-in. Saflux, hopefully we see you in four years. 
Now, speaking of quantum dots, the dream is that each quantum dot is not just a color converting layer, but a self emitting layer itself, meaning you energize the quantum dot to emit light without need of an OLED layer or a micro LED layer. Well, we saw that dream at the BOE display. Unfortunately, it was only 4.7 inches. Why so small? Well, they're still developing it. And although this is a prototype, there's one weakness. And yes, it is, once again, the blue. Blue quantum dots are very unstable. They don't last very long, and they need to figure that out. Well, that was just kind of like the blue OLED at the start of the OLED TV era, right? No one could figure out how to get the blue OLED stable until LG discovered W OLED and boom, the rest is history. Maybe there's such a thing as white quantum dot self emissive. Hey, think about it. So prediction time, which of these innovations will make it to your living room first? I think it would be the TCL folding coffee table TV, right? With the inkjet printed RGB OLED, because I think the way they do inkjet printed RGB OLED that's flexible is probably less expensive than how LG is doing it. And if they make it 4K instead of 8K, even more affordable. But I know you're asking, wait, why don't they just make a regular RGB OLED TV? On the one hand, yes, it'll be a brighter APL full screen, right? But specular highlights will be limited to under 700 nits. That may not be bright enough for HDR impact and definitely they will lose the peak brightness wars. So if that's the case, no one would pay extra for the RGB OLED. Although color accuracy should be phenomenal, the other TV technologies, W OLED and QD OLED, good enough in accuracy. So I think they're thinking, how can we make this special? It ends up being rollable. Now they could forget about the 8K, we don't need that. But 4K rollable in a coffee table, how much would you pay? And if you want to know more about the best OLED TVs this year, check out my reviews here and here. Until next time, stop the FOMO.